Welcome to what might become a regular podcasting with me and Jake just chatting random bike stuff. Um, we're going to talk about the giant TCR today, not because Cam Nichols and Hambini just threw a big spanner in the works this morning. I've kind of had this planned for ages, but it's it's relevant. It is, isn't it? <laughs> um, and I was going to talk about it because I think the TCR should be the benchmark bike, right? You had a TCR. I did. and I, I, I So I bought it four years ago, uh, start of 2020. Um, and it was a great bike. I really liked it. I won my first road race on it. Yeah. Up the giant TCR. Exactly. And I think the TCR is that bike where um, you what, got it when you were 14, 15? Uh, I would have been 16. Yeah. Okay. That age where it's going to be a gift from your parents at that age, mm. isn't it? Absolutely. And you go to the local racetrack, at your case, at the Saltair, and you can imagine one dad talking to the dad, oh, I'm thinking about getting my long, young lad or uh, a new bike. What should I get? And that conversation probably starts with, Get a giant TCR with a 105 group set. Can't go wrong. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, for, yeah, four years ago, I got, it was a giant TCR, Advanced Pro 2. We'll get onto this in a second, but the naming conventions of the Giants aren't the, they're not the catchiest, are they? No. And it had uh, the giant carbon wheels, which was a big selling factor for me, and the bog standard 105 group set. And it was rim brake at the time. Yeah. So you made all the right decisions at the time. It was our oh, rim, rim brake wasn't, disc brake wasn't really a thing, but it was the, it was the mid range carbon frame. Um, that you could change handlebars and stems dead easily yep. as you grew. Perfect choice. 105 group set, which is perfect choice, yep. and a good set of racing wheels. Yes, perfect, absolutely perfect. 1600 quid. Yeah, and and that was that was a that was a good price. That was like I was happy to pay that. You know, it wasn't. You know, I didn't have infinite money to spend. Yeah, I don't think that would have been a sale price either. It maybe, uh, like I think it might it, have been. It might have been a couple hundred quid off, but yeah, okay. it's in that ballpark. Yeah, we would have thought under two thousand pounds. Today, that same bike is. Three thousand two hundred ninety-nine pounds. Yeah, for the equivalent, it's double. It's double. <laughs> it's doubled the price in three years. Yeah, that's absolutely insane, and it makes it really hard to make the giant TCR the benchmark recommendation. It does. It really does. Because yeah, for me, I would not. Have, I would not at that time. Definitely would not have the money to pay three thousand two hundred quid on a bike. No, and nor would parents, etc. So where do they go? Where Where is the benchmark? Mm. Now, how do you? Where, what's the recommend? What's our recommendation to people watching this? Um, I thought, well, let's just get on and talk about it because yeah. how much you've grown in those three years? Oh, 16 yeah, sixteen to ninety. Well, I mean, you saw I was still riding that bike at the start of this year, and it's way too small. It was a me. medium, wasn't it? Yeah, medium large. Medium, like, again, medium giants, large. Something else we need to get onto is how wacky giant sizing is. It's so yeah. stupid. And now you're riding a fifty-eight yeah. SL six. Yeah, so quite a big jump in mm. like in bikes that you've gone through, and. I'll, interestingly the second bike or the bike now you're starting to earn and you're buying your own bikes mm. is you want something high spec but now you're more educated you've brought mm. something second hand and yep. you built it up and uh, made some really really clever choices on it and you've mm. got a really really lovely lightweight yeah. bike for that but and but but also as obviously as me working here i've got the skills to be able to buy stuff second hand fix it up and, and all that sort of stuff so f for someone else to buy the same spec bike i did in the same way it's going to cost quite significantly more in terms or, of getting be more risky etc exactly yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it definitely requires knowledge, I think, to buy a bike secondhand. There's an awful lot of stuff that can wear out, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so I, what I wanted to do was, how do we find um, a recommendation? So this is my point. The the base level, if you come down in price to the base level giant mm. DCR, and I've got in trouble for this before. <laughs> in fact, I got a phone call from, um, I can't remember his name now, at Giant, and he rang up and tried to put me right on a few things. And we agreed that for someone my height my weight my power i would probably find the base level uh tcr quite flexy and i do i have like i am six foot 85 86 kilos um put out around 250 watts 270 when i'm at the fittest um and i can make that bike flex and and that's and to, yeah in my head that's like a that you just that's a good rider that's someone who rides at the weekends goes and club rides that's a pretty common yeah i don't think i'm massively unusual i'm not the fittest guy in the world but then the giant advance wouldn't be geared at that no. either. So I think that's, and I find that a disappointing ride feel. Yeah. Um, and I would probably choose an aluminium bike over that. Yeah. I'd probably choose something like the Trekamond AL, the Team Machine AL. Not sure about the giant contend. I don't think no. that'd be on my, on my we've, list. We've seen, we've seen some interesting things with those over the years, haven't we? A, a Cannondale CAD 12, I think I'd probably choose because um, the CAD 13 is not a great bike. I don't know what happened. The CAD 10 was great. CAD 12 was great. CAD 13, like what happened? Yeah. It was like a CAD 8, wasn't it? Remember the CAD 8? That just yeah. sort of fading. <laughs> it was like not every single bike in the CAD series was a hit. So um, 
So that's where I think I would go. And then mm. I would probably try and claw back that three, probably more like half a kilo, let's say, in weight, but yeah. in a carbon and a, I'd claw that back in good quality wheels. Yeah. Um, because especially if you, any of the, so with the with the Giant, you've got on the, the base spec, so they have three specs of frame. They've got the Advanced, the Advanced Pro and the Advanced SL. Yeah. And so the cheapest one, the Advanced, any anyone you can't buy that as a frame only first and foremost as yeah, well we've got no idea what the we don't know what it is yeah and we don't really know the differences between that and the advanced pro i think is it the oversized steerer and stuff like that is, yeah but we don't yeah. know the differences under the hood uh, apparently it's exactly the same frame it is just the fork that's what i got put right on it um yeah um but yeah the the difference is as well you get absolutely awful wheels on those um on the base spec yeah they're, they're landfill yeah but and the price you're paying still nowadays is very, very expensive. Like if we look at the chart for for a Tiagra two by ten on an advanced disc three is two thousand three hundred and fifty quid. You see, yeah, and that's where that price that you've paid with inflation you'd might expect, okay, it's now two grand or it's around a bit two to two and a half thousand pounds. You're getting the lower grade frame and a group set which hasn't been updated. I have to check the records, but it, a long time. I uh, can't remember the last time Tiagra was updated. No. It, it even looks out of date now, doesn't yeah, it? It yeah. looks so dated. We desperately need um, a new Tiagra, a nice, well, a nice new Tiagra Claris and yeah. Zora. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all like all look so dated now. Um, but yeah, you with those with that bike, you get awful wheels. Quite frankly, that yeah. shouldn't shouldn't be on anything really. Yeah, those uh, three hubs are just going to disintegrate yeah. in thirty seconds. Yeah, um, and it's yeah. So you couldn't in on, on a good conscience, you couldn't recommend anyone that sort of bike. It's like for you're not gonna. I don't think you're gonna have a very good riding experience on something like that, are you? No, I no. But at that at that range, I would say go and look at something aluminium. Yep, a- a- absolutely. And there's better so, stuff on the market. In and aluminium. if we if we look at so the Contend, which is the aluminium bike, the 105 one is 1900 quid. Yeah, so we're like what 700 pounds up upgrade for the carbon frame. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not, is it? Because I mean. Yeah, at that sort of at that sort of price, you're still at least two thousand seven hundred pounds is a really really significant amount of money. Yeah, it and is. to be getting something that you're probably not going to be very happy with, it's um, it's that it's that little good better best thing, isn't it? It's like oh, why hasn't it got that stiffer fork? You know, yeah. um, you know, I'm just going to push myself to that next level, and the next ne- next thing you know, you're at base spec of three thousand three hundred quid. Yeah, and I think at that price, there's some really good stuff mm. on the market. I'm yep. not even thinking about sale prices, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think that's where the TCR for me always should be benchmark recommendation. Yeah. Upgrade to a slightly better brand or something. Or maybe the BMC comes with a, set, a better, better set of wheels or something for just a little bit more money. Yeah. But you start at TCR. You do, don't you? Yeah, that was... <laughs> and that's... Yeah, and it's like you even look at even the the, ex, more, the more expensive bike, the like the advanced SL whatever it is I, I can't see it, the point of that bike it anymore. makes absolutely no sense so the frame only costs 2,899 Great British Pounds which you think is actually quite a good price for a yeah. high modulus yeah. team spec because I, I like and it's you know integrated seat post like it, it looks it looks quite nice in my opinion and I think they ride pretty well I mean Jayco seems to do alright and then they yeah it's yeah, 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 yeah. a race, it's race winner yeah it's, yeah, it's one race it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a serious bike but for the what we would call the base like the base spec of that with Ultegra Di2 it's eight grand. It's yeah. If you're spending eight thousand pounds on a bike, you're, you're not buying a giant. A little bit sexy because it's still got that weird external cable in. It does. Every yeah. other brand at that price point is now completely integrated, really modernised. Oh, that's a good point. Do you reckon there might be a new TCR next year? It does feel like it's. I hope so. Well, they've right. just they've just brought out the new Propel this year. It's true. In time for the Tour de France. Um, and I mean, even that's very very expensive. Um, so we're still looking at and heavy. And heavy. That's, it's not. It's not as heavy as it used to be, um, <laughs> but then that was a serious elephant. That old. That old Propel. Yeah. Um, but it's still. That's still. I mean, the, it's more expensive than TCR. First and foremost, each each spec is about five hundred pounds more. Yeah. And for the, I mean, for the average rider, you don't need a Propel. Well, the fact they even brought a Propel out was quite an unusual move because most of the big brands have been ditching their big aero bike. Yeah. Like System Six is disappearing. Um, the Venge, yeah, etc. Rest in peace, my favourite bike. Yeah. It does look fantastic, and of all the dedicated aero bikes, the, I mean, Propel it's, it's very much a dying breed, isn't there? You've got the S5 still, yeah, and that's probably the most popular kind of 
r- like real high spec aero bike. There's the new foil. Um, I'm not a massive fan of that from Scott. No, I don't the, think that really has much of a place in the, in the Bianchi, etc. So, yeah. but most things are now going towards like the SL8, the Blue mm. Blade Seven Nine Five. Yeah, then the Dome's all, a bit of a weird all, one. Yeah, so. but that's just no one's buying that, are they? Sorry, uh, <laughs> we might you might get a few hot takes on this podcast from me, but <laughs> I, I just think yeah, there, there's it's a good, Civic. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> and it's got a little hole for uh, entry and exit around the back. <laughs> But it's just, yeah, they're, they're, it seems to be moving away from an as giant as what I used to call the people's brand. It seems like an odd decision to, because I mean, there are there is the there are some people who do want the full out aero bike, and they're willing, they, they're usually willing to pay good money for it. So, in, and in that case, it makes even less sense to me why Giant would still continue to make one. Yeah, very true, very true, and sort of bit, bit forced into it. They didn't have that that tier of like. Uh, endurance, the Defy, the TCR, which are meant to be the performance racy bike, and then the. Oh, and can we can we just say as well? We we checked before recording this podcast, and the most expensive Defy is is more expensive than the TCR. Mind blowing! It's just ridiculous. Uh, what a, what a horrible bike as well. Sorry to anyone who owns the new Defy, but it's actually awful. It's not a looker, is it? It's not. It's not a looker. Um, it's it's probably a very good, comfortable bike and it serves a purpose, but it's definitely not like oh, one of those. No, and and, <laughs> and especially at the, the price it is now, you pay you you pay more than yeah. a TCR. I wonder if they've done that because the the racers who crash regularly want to upgrade their wheels might be more tempted by a TCR, whereas the Defy Sport Team Endurance, you know, High X, I don't know. Yeah, they're working their prices out. I'd love mm. to be on there. I, yeah, I would like to have a look inside the um, inside the boardroom at Giant. I think it'd be very, very interesting. It is because when if you ever go through the website, it is so confusing how they're doing their tiers and their yeah. lists, and it's um, we'd be concentrating really on the prices of just the group set and the frame, and yeah. there's all sorts of things they sneak in there, like an SL1 or an SL2 yeah. wheel, or this, I mean, or this one's got a power meter, like but it's a giant branded power meter, and I, I think as a, as a consumer. It's, I think it's, without any help, it's very, very difficult to navigate the giant websites. And it's a perfectly fine website, but to actually understand what you're buying is very confusing because all the names are virtually the same. And it's like, it starts from giant TCR advanced. Yeah. And then you have the specs within that. But at the moment, there's two different models of the advanced in. There's an old one and a new one. Yes. And then you go to the advanced pro, which is the spec up. But then they've all got numbers relating to them. So it's like, well, is it is an advanced Pro 3 better than a, an adv- advanced pl- 1 Plus? Oh, my brain's hurting just thinking about it. it and, yes. and then you, it's just, just the most boring part of the podcast. It's ridiculous, though. It is ridiculous. It is. And as a, I think as, as giant who they are and the, the amount of bikes that they sell, it would be quite helpful for most consumers if they could sort out their naming and actually make a an easily navigatable kind of ecosystem and it must make sense for their stock holding as well to be able to do more bikes at the same spec hmm. must bring the price down rather than having all of their stock spread out around yeah. well, various each, like each set each drill spec yeah, each and, tier of bike has five different group sets on it doesn't it yeah it's um it must be uh, there must be uh, backlogs of stuff for the yeah. held up it must be really really confusing so I guess we've got one more question. If if the TCR isn't the benchmark bike, what is? What is? Well, I think that's going to be the question for 2024. I think the new, I mean, it depends what we're, I mean, obviously the whole industry has shifted in terms of what is now a benchmark price. Yes, granted. granted. So I think obviously that, that possible new look that we were talking about the other day for the price that that's looking at, could you say that would be a benchmark? Oh, I don't know. No, too much. It is still too much. I think it's a it's a good upgrade. I yeah. think if you had a TCR with an Altegra group set and mm. you'd outgrown it, yeah. you would might look at that look as a a frame upgrade. Yeah, I think that would be a really solid choice. You know, you've already brought a nice set of wheels. You've already got a nice group set, which is a little bit worn out, perhaps. But you you've outgrown, or you want to upgrade. That look is going to be a yeah. perfect upgrade. That's not. A benchmark the benchmark needs to be something that you can just walk in off the shelf anyone that we, we watches this podcast about where they are in the world would be like if they brought that they'd be fairly happy with it yeah it'll be like okay that was a sound recommendation got that didn't cost too much it's reliable it's is it is the is 105 the new altegra we've got i, think, I think it is i, I think or, even even when even four years ago when i was buying that bike there was no discernible difference between Altegra and 105. And now we've got 105 Di2. Maybe 
that whole tier needs to come down. Like we have super record, we have red, which is a tier above Duraace. Mm. We need to like reestablish how how we think about these tiers of group sets. But then you look at Tiago and there's nothing. We we need a new tag, don't we? Yeah, we do. Desperately, that would open up a new benchmark potentially. But the problem is, is no one no one wants to ride a bike with Tiago written on it, do they? Just because of the the understand what it what it used to mean, even if it's good. It's it actually quite a good group set. It, really it is. is it is. It actually works really fuck really well. Yeah. It's just uh, it just looks out of date on a carbon bike. These it does. Days, it the, really does. And, and as well, it's ten speed currently. Yeah. So that's like it, it, yeah. It, the whole, whole, whole needs an update. I guess that's going to be the question we're going to try and answer in twenty twenty four. Yeah. What's the benchmark? What is the benchmark bike? What can we say if your son daughter is going try and road racing for the first time and they want to get their first bike which they can be competitive on mm. um, and enjoy and grow with what is it yeah I don't know yet maybe, maybe we should ask our audience what do you think it is and so um, I think that's our mission we're going to yeah. find out I'll find it we'll see if we answer that should we, should we start buying cheap bikes to see what's good I'll ride them <laughs> <laughs> it could be yeah it's a, it's if anyone if anyone if anyone's watching and has a bike that they believe is the benchmark. the benchmark send us one yeah or put it in the comments down below we're going to put them into consideration i think we should try and yeah work out what is the benchmark recommendation road bike for 2024 right on that note it's time to end thanks for watching everybody um if you like this sort of um, random chat let us know in the comments we might do more i would quite I would quite good fun yeah i think that's quite fun i like i like waffling i like ranting at right. ryan <laughs> anyone really right i'm done see you later <laughs>